Hello, ladies and gentlemen, every single one of you out there that's currently listening, watching, tuning in. Welcome to Pumpkin Emoji. My name is Rod, Rodrigo Borges, and I'm one of your hosts. And tonight, as always, going forward, I'm joined by Jeff, Jeffrey Koval. Say hello, Jeff. I can't really... I. I can't really say the image, so... <laughs> yeah! Exactly. Okay, cool. We are almost ready to go. We're just giving people a little bit of time so we can get started. So, so let, let, let's go over the stuff that uh, each of us here has done. Um, oh, apparently we can't hear Jeff. Uh, we don't can't hear. Ken <gasps> either, oh apparently. my god. Okay, let's 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 give it one more shot. Let's give it one more shot. It, it's the first Jurassic Park opening. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're going to eat all our viewers. Hi, I'm Rod, uh, one of the hosts, creator of Onyx52. Uh, this is Jeff Koval, my co-host. Can you hear me now? Rod, they heard your intro already. <laughs> you don't need to start from the very top. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I got the Yeah, it's okay. Got the no, I'm glad they called us early before we started you know, doing a deep dive. And yes. We're joined again, even though we just said this, by uh, Kay, the creator of Hi, I'm Mary Mary. <laughs> Which, you know, Hello. repeating myself, just wrapped up a couple months ago. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Kay, how are you feeling? I'm pretty good. It's a fine October night. Ooh. A, 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 nice, a nice old night for some spooky stuff. Oh, well, yes. I mean, we had a windstorm the other day, so uh, a lot of fallen trees and whatnot. Yes. See, at the very beginning of the pandemic, actually... Rod came to me and wanted to do something similar to this. And then, you know, the world ended and continued to burn for six months. So we kind of <laughs> oh sat God. on our hands for that. Yes. We had like one stream and we were very eager to do it. And then life happened. Yeah. So he, he approached me, you know, a couple of weeks ago. It's like, you know, Halloween's coming up. Let's actually give it a shot this time. And I'm very, you know, thankful you took our offer, Kay. And hopefully we, we have fun mm -hmm. with this. And, yeah, we got the spooky spirits coming in. Indeed, uh, yeah. Uh, Jeff and I had the idea to do this um, this Twitch school of eldritch learning back in the back before the <laughs> pandemic started, which was literally it, it was kind of the same idea of this, um, but it was going to focus much more on uh, it, it was going to be less uh, casual. It was going to be more of a formal sort of master class kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, let's get this ball rolling. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll have Amnesia, the Dark Descent playing in the background. I'll be, I'll be playing it. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's, let's get this thing started. Kay, you created, um, you created Hi, I'm Mary Mary. Um, when exactly did the idea hit you at first? Well, I have one so thing before we oh, yeah, start that, do you have a pet name for that? Because I know saying project names all the way out sometimes is, it sounds weird to the people who make them. Does that make that sense? For me? Uh, yeah, no, I get you totally. I usually just call it Mary. There, there oh, you go. Okay. Because <laughs> fun fact, fun trivia fact, um, originally the title was just going to be Mary Mary, and then I found out there's like a Christian singing duo named Mary Mary, and I didn't want to get the two confused publicly, <laughs> so I added the high I'm. <laughs> like, that's literally where it came from. I can only imagine, like, fans of the Christian duo coming up to your videos going like, oh yeah, I love G, oh my god, what is this thing? I think, I think like when I, I uploaded the, the first channel. video, <laughs> oh my god. When I uploaded the first video, it was still the channel was still called Mary Mary. And then I told a couple IRL friends, hey, look this thing up. And they're like, I just see uh church songs. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on, I need to differentiate. Is, is there something you want to tell us, Kay? Like, are you converting? Like, what's going on? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, oh, it, it really, the high I'm was a secondary thing. Okay. Um, because for the longest go, time, it's just uh, called Mary Mary. Deep seated trivia right there, right off the bat. Yeah, and like right <laughs> off the bat, we, we a pumpkin emoji exclusive. <laughs> we got the exclusive <laughs> scoop. <laughs> um, so we're, we're doing this is the original amnesia. Yes, uh, the Dark Descent. So we're, when we're this going actually, back. what's that? Oh yeah, no, we're going back. When this first came out, and I, I want to say it was just because of all this stuff. You know, I was interested in it and at that time. It was like I was a snob with movies. And I just wanted like found footage movies. <laughs> and then when it came to like video games, it was like I only wanted weird, you know, quasi like indie games or like games that really weren't talked about yet. Cause it was a different, you know, social media environment. You didn't have these things being immediately advertised to you mm. so like anything that got like a creepypasta written about it like that's what we play like that's how i found minecraft that's how i heard of amnesia there so this is very you know i don't think i've played more than two hours of this but it always has a very special place in my heart because of that whole like vibe to it god i think i found amnesia through being 13 years old and finding pewdiepie playing it and that's how I had found it at the time. And then just watching through all of those Let's Plays. Right. Y'all have such relatable stories. I found out about this game because of Mass Defect from Kitty0706. Is that a... That's a channel? Uh, Kitty0706 did the Team Fabulous 2 videos. Oh, like oh, 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 that's right. That's right. Yeah. We and, just talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and Mass Defect was like, uh, obviously, a Mass Effect parody. And it was so stupid. But I remember that I was like, huh, is, this is a real game? Like, that? it's not just a joke? And I looked and at it's it. Not a, it's not a bit. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> it was absolutely not a bit. I lost my mind a little bit. But um, the thing that I really, really enjoyed about Amnesia when I first played it was the simple fact that the game, the game kind of tricks you into scaring yourself for no reason. And it's the paranoia in a nutshell absolutely and i think that's one of the things that stuck with me the longest about this game so hey when you came up with the idea of um mary how how was that like like where where did it originally come from i it originally kind of came from ultimately i was like i want to make a series but i have no idea what um but i am a very very visual person and so i'll get flashes of images in my head just really randomly uh just from random things i see or random music i'm listening to or whatnot and i'll say hey wait that thing i just saw in my head rules i want to piece that together with something and i write that down and then multiple kind of images come out of nowhere just from consuming other content and ruminating on them and then i start to kind of pull everything together and say hey wait i'm noticing a recurring theme here in some of the stuff i'm thinking of could i riff off of this mm. and that was mostly the second half of my freshman year of college just me doing that for six months of oh wait these are some really cool images and themes i could bounce off of and then i started pulling that together and making a narrative out of it and I think I still have, and it's still dated, like April 2016, this scrawled out rough summary of what eventually became Hiya Mary Mary. Right. Hey. It's, it's interesting that you say, you know, visually you know, learning or inspired because, you know, we, we've known each other for a while, but when I first, you know, got the whisperings of this project, it was, you know, it was, very you know it looked like, like a movie poster like the, the beauty that you know whether you want to call them a monster or a character like that image with the was it a porcelain mask or it, it looked like it's, a porcelain a, it's mask. supposed to look like one no and it's shocking and you know i think you know some horror in the last 10 or 20 years have kind of keyed in on that like just uncanny valley like like the strangers or the purge mask yeah and oh, yeah. Like, when i saw that i was like you know, like I said, I, I thought it was like some, you know, triple A movie coming out or oh. something. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, all the effects were, had their appeal. 
but like that one in particular stuck out to me so it's interesting you know that's what inspired you and that's what left an impression on somebody else you know coming across it yeah because i definitely had some key shots like some key images that i was like i have to build this in and like for example the shot of in the second video dislikeness where we first see mary mary um that shot of her and mary standing opposite an, uh, one another in the mirror right um like that was one of the big ones i saw um i think one of the very first ones i saw that i didn't use till the end was um just this uh there's a scene when mary makes contact with the crawling darkness and then everything just goes completely haywire mm -hmm. um and the crawling darkness makes a circle around her head um like, she's leaning up against sort of the like wall. an inverted halo kind of thing yes okay. yes and that's one of the ones i held on to and was like i want to use that somehow um and i think let me think there were a few others that were big kind of images i riffed off of or i think when i it was a whole lot of like putting these images together and then establishing a narrative through each one uh so before i would write my shot lists for each individual video i'd say hey, do this thing, or hey, include this shot of this, or, mm. and, and then there were a few that I would just get rid of if they didn't, if they weren't thematically relevant, but it was a lot of scene with X, Y, Z, or scene with X, this thing happening, or show this thing, um, and it would be a lot of just kind of filling in the gaps as I went. Right, so, so it'd be safe to say that you would come up with sort of a set piece for each video, and then find how it you could make it thematically relevant. Yeah, I think I think that's how I approached a lot of, the, especially the early videos. Like the first five, are I I'd, I'd say the first five are very differentiated from the rest of it because I think by video six I knew what I was doing a right. little bit yeah. more. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You kind of hit the ground running and yeah, learn to, learn to I, walk, I, learn to run. Right. I I think that that's interesting you say that because one of the one of the big questions that I think um, I have for this specific uh, for, for the show itself is that what what would you say changed about not only the way you make the videos but also the way you approach um, just the series writing from the beginning of your creative process to uh, when you were more I don't want to say mature but more like experienced with your own world. What do you think changed I, from the beginning? I think the first in in the beginning it was a lot more a lot more chaotic but chaotic in an actual chaotic sense and not in a chaotically ordered sense like I kind of created some guidelines in the future for what I wanted to do but in the beginning it was like oh I sort of have an idea here I'm just screwing around uh also because i had very little intent of anything to do with it and wasn't expecting anything to come of it so it was partially just me playing around with after effects and trying to make these images i saw into a bit more of a reality that's because the um I, I like to call those first five videos more of like an introduction arc because each video meets a new uh monster Hmm. Oh, so it's almost like a like a preseason or a, like a intro course. Yeah, to, kind of. To the world. Kind of like a here's what's going on. Here's okay. the, here here is the situation. Let's build the world. Let's 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 establish the conflict. So and for the for the people in the chat, um, K does have some behind the scenes and Q and A completely about the series on a behind the scenes channel. Is that that right, or yes. is, it, is it? Yes. Paywalled or something? It's unlisted. Oh no, it's know. it's it's public. It's out there. Oh, that's um, right. Just search "Hi and Mary Mary Q and A." Um, you can try to search K period, but it's a little bit. You'll have probably less luck. Mm. <laughs> can we can we try to get that uh, that link on the chat? Yeah, no, we'll, we'll follow. Oh, you know, I can do that. Yeah, I'll take care of that right now. Okay, cool. Um, um, something that came to mind, you know, considering that we're still, you know, well, at least in North America, we're still in a pandemic. We're still kind of on lo lockdown. But I was thinking, you know, early on when we were nothing but inside, you know, thinking about the series itself, it, it, I know how much work actually goes into it. So it's not like 
I'm not trying to like diminish or anything by saying minimalistic, but in terms of a production, it looks like it's you know just you and maybe somebody else helping. Was that something that was of necessity or is that like what you wanted to do from the beginning? I think it just kind of happened that way. Um, a lot of what I ended up doing with Hi, I'm Mary Mary was me just kind of leveraging what resources I had at my disposal. Um, Cause I, at the time, most of my friends were either away at college or um, didn't, or had very complex schedules. So I didn't really want to have to try to schedule getting other people around. Uh, so I thought, oh, well I can, I can shoot it in my house. I can play all the characters. And that gradually was like, that gradually became a theme. And when I was writing the story together based on just a couple of things that, oh, I, I don't have a ton of really spooky locations nearby me other than like the woods mm. and, and my house. And the other thing is the I definitely leaned heavily into the whole house as horror mainly because I was still feeling an incredible amount of spite over the cancellation of Silent Hills and oh, there you the go. taking <laughs> Fair off enough. of PT from the PlayStation Store. I continue to be a little bit mad about that. Same. Um, but, <laughs> um, God, what we could have had. Yes. And that's we, a little... we might still have it. I mean, Kojima and, and Del Toro are still working together, so. See, and then that's PT, true. that's a, another classic example that, you know, it was a little later in the whole you know, time period I was talking about, but like, that's exactly like, I, I didn't care about the next Call of Duty that was coming out. You know, I play it with my brother, but like no game ex excited me except like weird shit like that. You know, like PT, that was, that you know, that came out. People downloaded that, that uh, I guess, teaser, that demo. Label like, teaser, that was, yeah. You know, I, I lived in a house with a couple of my buddies at that time. And, like that was just the, the time sink. And it wasn't that long of a, you know, demo or anything, but, just theorizing how much can happen from two hallways and lights going out. Absolutely. Like, that's an amazing yeah. to me, more so than the, than the demo itself. Like, will people yeah. take that and run with it, you know, storytelling and, you know, talking to their friends about it? That's the kind of stuff I like. Yeah, same. Yeah, and, and I think about how PT, for me, was, at the time, I was, I think for some reason, freshman and sophomore year of college, I was just binge-watching horror movies on the weekends. Yes. Um, just looking for things to scare me. Um, and I was finding I was getting more freaked out by watching playthroughs of horror games than I was horror movies. Um, and PT in particular, like, scared me shitless. I was like, oh, God. And I actually asked a friend on my floor, hey, you want to just come hang out in my room and we can watch like a full playthrough of PT from the beginning to the end. <laughs> and, and then literally, I'm not even kidding. We turned the lights out. We watched PT, just this playthrough um, on my roommate's television. And I must have put like a soda can in the freezer and you shouldn't do that. Oh no. It, oh no, it exploded, in the didn't it? While we were watching the game. And I <laughs> screamed. And so I don't know if maybe that's why I associate PT with something that scared me or Actual I mean trauma. I, I almost yeah. oh my god uh, you poor thing but, oh my god it scared me so much it like threw the it flew the refrigerator door open and just came at me that is amazing <laughs> honestly it's a great when, uh, story to associate with PT. life conspires against you for some environmental storytelling like one time um i'm sure you guys have seen it the found footage movie grave encounters Yes. There's a bit with their clocks going haywire and stuff. And the person I was with, we were hanging out and then, like the power went out or something. And we were looking around for candles and like we went into the, the kitchen and the microwave oven and the, the like alarm on the on the oven top. Like everything was blinking, you know, like midnight or whatever. And it was like the power literally just went out. But it, like it was literally what we just saw on TV, oh, you know, no. 20 minutes earlier. Right. So it was like, yeah, OK, yeah, thanks for uh, giving me nightmare the environment appreciate it house thanks <laughs> yeah. apartment right but I, I i think it speaks i think it speaks to sort of a you know this thematic inversion of safety when it comes to to mary i think that the, the thing that struck me the most was this idea of you know oh god sorry i got scared for a second <laughs> um, you're actually trying to run for your life right now <laughs> uh no it was just this thematic inversion of this safety that is to be seen in the light. You know, you have this 
uh, this moment where um, Mary tests the the this the hypothesis of uh, oh I'll just keep the I'll just keep the lights on you know I don't have to worry about it um, and this and I don't want to say rule breaking because you know it, it, they she tested it to see whether it was a rule and it, it was just this subversion of of like safety that I think hit me very strong with it and I think it resonates with what you were saying Jeff with um um with with just doing stuff in a house you know this inversion of safety of like oh when you're home you're safe yeah oh, yeah no like, and it's like when like you said you know a, a place of comfort you know a, a cabin in the woods you know a vacation home that gets flipped on its head or like i mean that's some someone in chat dante is saying um huge list of like you know hugely um successful indie horror in the last couple of years I'm just thinking about more, you know, specifically what what Rob brought up about, you know, safety and comfort and light. It's like everybody, everybody in this chat, everybody in the, you know, in the text right now has an opinion about the movie Midsummer, which was a horror movie that took yes. place entire almost entirely during the day, you know, and it's about you know mm. a relationship breaking down and you know friends not you know letting you down, and it's just like, I mean, it's a very, you know, stressful and in. in you know, effective, you know, thing, taking things that are supposed to be there for you and just removing them from the equation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Um, the one thing, the one thing that I will say that struck me instantly with, uh, with Mary was just the, it, to me, the, the way that things were being shot in the beginning felt very much like, um, what was the name of the the movie? I just just watched it on Netflix uh, just a little while ago. Alive, I think. Hashtag, hashtag alive, and it completely completely different themes, completely different type of. Uh, was it the the zombie one? Yes. Yeah, I saw the trailer for I'm that. I was like, we have to. It, it very much felt like. Uh, I, I honestly thought it was like a prequel or something to Train to Busan. So so it, did I. It has like so that same I. vibe to it. Yes. Um. But the thing is, like, I, I've been, I, I've loved zombies ever since I was a kid. But to me, this idea of, oh, we got another follow, cool. This idea of the, you know, trying to, to just use a, a storytelling as a method of maintaining sanity. You know that which which I I saw <laughs> with a dangerous road to go down. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. I completely, you know, I'm not going to interrupt you, but it's like the, the struggling artist, you know, if, if that's at that point what, you know, you're using as an outlet, absolutely you are probably suffering greatly at that point. But yeah, yeah continue. I, I don't mean to cut you off. Right. I, the, the, the way I would put it is less um, in real life. I mean it more as a thematic thing for a character to use. Right. Um, the thing that I noticed when I was watching hashtag alive was that i was like this feels very much like what mary was doing this idea of like i don't even know if people out there are, are watching you know and then finding out later that yes people are watching and that giving them you know personal and emotional support you know, I, I i thought i don't know that there, there was a very relatable thing of just finding out that mary does have the support that she didn't think she did and I think that's an effective tool, like in, in all storytelling. It's like even if it doesn't immediately come across to the viewer, you know, why these people are doing it. Sometimes you just have to give the character a shovel and tell them to go dig a hole. Yes. And either there's going to be a purpose for it that they find, or you're screwing with the viewer. You know, you don't want to be insulting to to the audience. But sometimes, you know, motivations are obviously unclear from the get go, and it's like, is this going to pay off? Is this character going to have salvation is are they going to get over that hill or, or not or are they just going to keep suffering and right. that, that's a you know that's a fun thing to do too you know <laughs> just right. keep dragging the, the agony across i mean you either you either learn something from succeeding or you learn about the folly of trying it can go both ways um oh yeah the chat's bringing up uh a classic Alan Wake, which is uh, oh god, yes, very, very close to my heart, and 
which has DLC in the new game Control out recently that involves the story, but I haven't gotten to play it yet myself. But... I haven't done it either. Yeah. I only... Control is an amazing game in that it is. world. Um, I, I was very happy to see a game that... Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit biased, but I'm, I was very happy to see a game that created a very believable SCP Foundation-esque uh, thing that just did it for so much justice. You know, it, it felt like the people making Control really loved it. And, yeah, to, to that extent, Kay, are, were there any, like... I mean, I'm sure we all share, like, the, the big online horror out there, but, like, as you... you know, bef What inspired you before, you know, making Mary and everything... Or things you've uh, come up since you've created it. Were there any, um, you know, favorites out there? You know, besides, you know, PT obviously being a major release. You know, things that were born online, things that you know your your mom and dad don't know about. I mean, definitely, I I gotta attribute a lot of it to the Slenderverse, um, mm. because oh, yeah. that's what I I'd been like a long time listener, first time caller in that respect. <laughs> um, I think I because I like found marble hornets in what is it god 2011 um and had then from there just kind of nosedived into the slenderverse from there and just became an ardent fan in that respect but then i also watched a ton of just online found footage stuff and weird videos and viral videos but uh like i really loved and i bring this up Often, I really loved Lonely Girl 15, even though that was oh, horror. Yes. yes, absolutely. I think that, that was my like first experience with that sort of genre. <laughs> like, I, I think there was maybe about two seconds that I was like, is this real? Oh yes. My God. I mean, again, I was in seventh grade. So, I mean, I the I, I, first, time, first time I saw Marble Hornets, I, I was shaking in my boots. Like, I was, I I was literally looking at so somewhere fast. out there is a discarded private youtube i have that there's an outgoing message to presumably troy wagner behind the marble hornets account saying hey dude is this real <laughs> from me <laughs> uh, yep. it, that makes me very happy fortunately youtube kind of gutted their messaging system so it'll never see the light of day <laughs> amazing i love but yeah, that but all but God, you can fall I down think, that, yeah. that rabbit hole go on i think i um and this is bringing up something that maybe if you went to like a, a book fair in middle school or elementary school, you might catch this one. But if anyone is familiar with Patrick Carmen's Skeleton Creek, um, mm. that was like one of my first experiences with stuff that was actually interactive because the book itself was a closed story. It was the book and then you go to a website and you type in a password to get... Um, uh, you go in to type in a password to get a video. and But then as a marketing tool, they created Skeleton Creek is Real, which <laughs> I fell for completely in my middle school and elementary school days um, and was convinced because there was so much stuff around. I was convinced, oh, my God, the, the Fort Sumter or whatever dredge uh, – that this is this is real there's there's something <laughs> happening here i like was digging through archives and typing in passwords in like fifth and sixth grade like taking this so seriously right so i'm pretty sure that was one of my first real experiences with that that's excellent. and that kind of informed things going forward and then seeing oh wait there's a whole bunch of people who do this for funsies that's awesome <laughs> can, yeah. can i be one of them <laughs> Yeah, that was that was <laughs> honestly yeah that was honestly the way I went about it. Um, God, this is a little embarrassing to admit, but uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, where are you going with this? Go yeah, <laughs> no, you 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 know this because um, I know. <laughs> yeah, I had just um, not to get too deep into it. I had just come off a really bad relationship, and I was like, well, what am I gonna do? You know, like I was I was very depressed, and I was like, I, I you know what? I'm gonna make a show. I'm gonna make a show about the SCP Foundation because I like that, and I am a professional actor. I can I can do that. Um, it, it was honestly kind of a an angry like I can do this. <laughs> so spite is the best encouragement. Sometimes. Honestly, in, yeah, in a way, yeah. Um, but then before I had filmed anything for Monarch Fifty Two, um, I remember that I 
Oh boy, hold on, hold on. Uh, messed up boy. Sorry, I guess. Oh yeah, he's right around that corner. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> um, I remember that I before I had filmed anything, I had the bright idea to... Uh, I, I sort of did the prison thing, like find the biggest guy in the in the prison and make him your bitch. Um, oh <laughs> no! It, 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 it's no. I just went up to to the to the Everyman Hybrid Facebook page, and I sent yeah. them a message. It was a cold open of, hey, like basically, you know, do you want to work together? Thing. I just like six months from the end game like everything was done I yeah was like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> like, what, do you, what do you want from me man <laughs> but what was it you what were you the one that answered the first time i thought it was vince I mean, I'm, I'm only ever the person answering that stuff okay um <laughs> god i remember that yeah, I, no, I i have to deal with these cold open 2 a.m messages i'm so sorry about that <laughs> no i mean we're, we're joking about it now and I was, you know, quickly, I was going to say your experience with the, the Creek story, Kay, that was me and the series of unfortunate events when I was growing up. Like, they didn't lean yep. so much into, like, they didn't say, like, this is real, but they definitely had, like, the marketing that allowed you to follow a rabbit hole on your own. Yes. So I definitely, you know, bit that that line, and, you know, I was hooked for life. But um, taking a step back, I mean, we can joke about how you know, cringy we were when we found these stories in you know, middle school and high school. Oh, yeah. But, like, literally the only reason we're sitting here right now is is because of that. You know, one way or another, it'll, it, you know, we ended up here. And I think that that's kind of cool. You know, whenever you, you think of all the, the bullshit that came with it and all the minor or major irritations that came with it, you know, there's a lot of good to come from it as well. And that's kind of inspiring. Yeah. Totally. Uh, as, as God, for... I was reading back the other day, like some of my, because I had this, I had this old fandom blog. I'm not naming it, uh, but um, <laughs> but there there were Slenderverse posts on that Tumblr blog. Good luck uh, finding them, assholes. Uh, there's one that still gets reblogs to this day. Um, oh no! <laughs> you got you got that Tumblr cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like got like at least 200 reblogs on it. Amazing. Um, but I like I was reading some of those back and I'm like, girl, no. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, I mean, it, it, it would always be like, this is such a good episode, or just things like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was 14, guys. I mean, yeah. What I do you want from me? <laughs> were kids, but when you look back at something, you have to have a visceral, a visceral reaction to it, or that means you haven't grown up. Yes. And you absolutely. don't have to start right, having totally. fun, but you have to react to it one way or another. Like <laughs> all sorts of past cringe is just you know hilarious to me, but I know <laughs> how how tough it could be looking back at some of that stuff. Like I mean, personally, like you know, talking about projects, like I will not watch certain videos of like things that you've played monday morning quarterback you know over you know in your head about like i should have done this we should have done that yeah we should have re yeah. you know, fixed this at it before we produced it and like not even about the emh just like little stupid shit you know everywhere in your life you know you, you always second guess yourself because it's like you know, if i had one you know one more hour to work on that thing you, you could fix it and mm. yeah I, I guess you know we could bring that back into you know, the whole topic of tonight with with Mary, were were there any? I mean, we want to be on a, a good note too, so you, know, you don't have to <laughs> oh, uh, furrow your brow about it. But like, were there any major scenes or effects that you you wish you could you know, spend another two weeks on? You know, go back and take out of time and you know change. I think um, I know I mentioned this in my Q and A, but there was just like a couple of I'm I'm very testy about the. Um, first five videos because again yeah. i was still just kind of experimenting at the time mm. but i just i i consider this probably my most momentous fuck up in that i forgot <laughs> to mask out an entire hand oh um, no <laughs> and i just see it every time um but thankfully it's shrouded in shadow but i know it's there um yeah, that's so that's that one matters. of those ones that it's like oh can't watch this oh where's the hand it's an arm it's just an arm God. i forgot the hand yeah um, that is way too relatable and then, and then just like little things that completely slip by you um or 
I think like there's this one moment where I might have forgotten to mute a shot and you can vaguely hear some ambient noise in the background that I didn't really want being there. Just like the little things. Because if I, if I sit too long, I start to pick things apart and say, oh, well, this should be like this. Just kind of forgetting the fact that it's been four years. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I think, I, think I, put, I think I put a code because I was still on the ARGs equal codes always kind of kick uh, um, binary is a cruise control to cool like that binary yes is cruise absolutely across your, your I was, screen and static. i was still on that um a little bit um on my was it my third video no it was the fourth um the darkness moves that there's a code there except instead of using any sort of um pre-existing code i was like i'm gonna make up my own uh, which ended up (laughs) being so incredibly difficult for everyone to figure out that i felt so bad somebody figured it out but it was based on like the positioning of keyboards and complete oversight in that i was like wait a minute not everyone has the same keyboard setup Mm. um and i hadn't really realized that at the time and so if i could go back i would have probably nixed it completely um, cause it didn't really help more. It, it was more like, Ooh, code. So let's put a code in. Yeah. Like a, a puzzle for the sake of a puzzle, which yeah. you know, some people really like that. So I, I know, you know, you probably have your opinions about doing that choice, but you know, who knows somebody out there that's probably like, that might've been their favorite part of the entire project. Could be. That's true. I, I know personally, like, oh, you know, finding and watching ARGs and stuff. It's like. I give so much more credit to, like, personally, our audience and audiences in general of it, because as much as I like, you know, writing them or making them, I do not have the patience for, you know, 80% of the puzzles out there. Absolutely. And I I find it absolutely incredible that, you know, if you have five dedicated viewers, you give them some sort of puzzle, they'll, you know, they'll outsource that and they'll figure that out within a day. But... You know, it, it's, I, I know, like, I'm sure you, you felt this way when you were first writing it, or, you know, the things you, you don't think about, like you said, the keyboard position. It's like, you know, point A to B, what you're trying to do with this puzzle. And, you know, when you're sitting there conceptualizing it, it's like, is this going to go over people's heads or are they going to figure it out instantly? That was something that I always <laughs> like, was always trying to weigh. And, you know, it's, it's what, you know, do you do it to move the story along or are you trying to make them achieve something? Mm. Right. I think I succeeded that second time around when I put some kind of interactivity in it uh, in the form of glitched out photos on the blog because people figured out that if you like layer the two completely glitched out photos together, you get something in the difference between the two of them. Right. Um, and so I think that and that supported it. The entire goal of that was to figure out that they needed to ask Mary to live stream. Um hmm because I would live stream as soon as they figured it out. Um, but the the first one was more like, oh, let's just throw a lore dump in there. But then the <laughs> second time around was, I think, God, it was like two years later. That was the live stream that I got violently ill at. I was, oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no. It... If I looked like shit in the live stream, it's because I was. <laughs> <laughs> um... I mean, that, that's always a... Uh... A balancing act too it's like if you especially if you introduce that sort of mechanic then you know is that going to be like are they going to keep trying to do that after you know after that piece of story comes out i know there's a running gag a friend of mine jay like we wouldn't even talk to each other each other he would just send a message to me saying email sent and it's like the one time early on in some project that the audience gets a response to an email then that email account is going to be dead and inundated with messages of people trying to move the mm-hmm. game along by doing the same thing. Right. So it's, it's always interesting, like how, you know, to me, how the game makers, you know, either listen to everything or like how they choose to, you know, block out the noise. Because you know, is this mechanic going to be something that's consistent throughout the game, or is it a one-time thing that you know unlocked it and it's done? Right, and, and and making sure that people understand the difference between the two is such a different, a, a difficult thing to do. Is you know, how do you do it without breaking immersion? Yeah, or you're trying to do it without being heavy-handed and insulting to them too, because yes. it's not their fault for you know trying to, like, if I find a mechanic in like a fighting game or you know a shooter that I like, you know, I'm going to abuse that thing until my joystick breaks. Yeah. So it's like, why wouldn't you do the same thing in a? And, and it wouldn't feel good. Game? 
it wouldn't feel good for the developer to be like, hey, why are you trying to do the thing that worked? Fuck you. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want to, again, insult them. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny you mentioned, Kay, that you had a code that uh, that was very difficult to solve. I had a code that had no solution because I was an idiot making it. So, wow. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. So did you yeah. screw that up yourself? Or... I did. So the, the one thing that I had thought about when I first started was um, I don't have the patience to create uh, a lot of puzzles. And I wanted to kind of bring in a code master, you know, somebody that knows how to create a, an engaging and fun and solvable puzzle. And um, I, I actually came to the conclusion. Oh, sorry, I'm a little scared. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to form <laughs> cohesive thoughts. Life and we're just sitting here laughing. Yeah, please do. <laughs> that's that's my favorite part about everything. Um, so I, I was just sitting there trying to figure out, like, oh, how am I going to make interesting puzzles for people to, to solve? And... The thing is, I, I, I actually want to bring this up because I still don't have an answer to that. You know, what is the, what I, I would ask, what is the, the, what are the elements to a good puzzle that even people that don't like puzzles can't help but want to get involved? Mm. So it's like, well, I, you know what, I'm thinking about, about this whole topic about, you know, if you make the unsolvable puzzle, how do you directly speak to you know to the audience without breaking immersion? Now, okay, was were you trying to stay like completely removed from the audience? Or did you try to keep immersion going as long as possible? I I definitely tried to to a degree. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I didn't create my I didn't go public on my out of game Twitter until Mary was done because I didn't want it to get confused with the official Mary Twitter. Uh, and so well, I basically operated point. out of game on Tumblr pretty much entirely behind the scenes, mainly because I was really, really concerned that right around the time I was starting up Mary, we were having the situation with Marina Joyce and mm. the similarities were they, there was a lot of similarities. Oh my goodness, that's and right. Marina Joyce. And so I I'm, I'm not really familiar with that. didn't want somebody. Yeah, so she was this YouTuber that all of a sudden kind of started acting very strange in her videos, and there was this speculation that something was really wrong. Um, that I, I, what, what, what there were so many theories about what was going on. Yeah, I think I mean, they like had people check on her. Mm -hmm. You could uh, Google that for like a not necessarily true crime deep dive, but a, a real event that you know scared a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that you know story of a, a girl potentially you know a young woman trapped in her house while this is happening in people's real lives on the same platform that could be kind of you know heavy to deal with. Right. So you're trying to avoid like merging those two you know streams of you know media online i guess you, yeah you i think i even like, seen some people refer to hi and mary mary as the new marina joyce oh no and oh. so i was like uh oh uh oh <laughs> hold on i need <laughs> to do, do a scenes. little bit of i need a little i need people to know that this is fake because i don't want someone you know like tracking down my ip address and you know genu actually hacking me yeah. uh in the name yeah. of safety um or and so I, I basically just solving. wanted to yeah I, I just wanted to make sure that and and also because some of the topics were extremely distressing to people and yes. that grounding aspect of oh wait this isn't real uh yeah. there's someone here and i can send them a a message and be like are you okay i mean i genuinely i really am glad that i had that tumblr up when gone dropped to video 16 yeah because i, I recently rewatched it and was like holy shit that was so much more brutal than i realized it's kind of um, punk rock <laughs> and and people were were coming to me like oh my god are, are you okay and so thankfully I, I that had existed so people were able to separate that but if if you were having trouble separating fantasy from reality and you saw that, like I I I'm just glad that I had been 
around as the creator at least at least even if it was like the bowels of tumblr and just the fact that i existed a little bit at all just well, kind of made yeah, that yeah that's up. incredibly you know what's the word for it? like prescient and you know mature to, to think about that because yeah. i know a, a running gag with me and my friends early on like we're talking freshman year of college the, the running gag was whoever gets a cops call on them first wins like you know who, who thinks there's a missing person or who thinks the gore is real and it's like if you need to comfortably set yourself up outside like like you did with the tumblr i, I think that's a great idea save you a lot of especially stress down because the line. some of it was so so brutal yeah. um and, and i just basically wanted to be like hey here's a space where you can debrief and yes. i tried to debrief a little bit i think i tried to debrief a lot when gone dropped because it was so traumatizing for a, a few people to see it um and because a lot of people were like oh my god is, is she actually okay like i i mm -hmm. want to check in with the creator there, there were people dming me like hey you are you good um and and so I'm glad that it existed as a, basically like a little bit of a lighthouse in the chaos. Oh yeah, definitely. And I, I think, uh, at least to me, is something that always sticks out with that is again, it's like, when are people trying to, like, poke at an online narrative? When are they trying to be helpful, or when are they just being like a creep online? Yeah. And as a showrunner, it's so hard to juggle those things and. As people are saying in the chat right now, it's like, how much do you or do you not engage with the audience after, you know, out of the game's element, after the game's element? You know, do you completely cut it off? Do you do it in limited venues? Or do you completely open yourself up to it? And yeah. I, I don't think there's a right answer, but I think people, one way or another, through their experiences, know what they certainly prefer. Yeah, because then again, there's the, and I, I don't want to get into recent events, but. Uh, there's something that you and I talked about, Jeff. It's this. Um, did I talk about like parasocial anyway. relationships? Uh, not just parasocial, but more like, you know, we deal with subject matters that can be, um, like Case said, traumatizing to certain people, um, sure. and, and and us included. You know, we're not we're not free from from trauma, but you know, we we sort of have this um, this this responsibility to. Um, to make sure that the people that engage with us, our stories are safe, that the people that mm -hmm. participate are, you know, have a space where if things get a bit too much, you know, they have a space where they can talk, a space where they can breathe and, and, and sort of seek um, support from each other, you know, and from ourselves as well. I, I just think it's... Um, I don't know. There, there's a fine line that we have to toe between making an engaging story and making sure that the people that engage with that story, the people that you know give us airtime, are being taken care of. Are being are safe. Yeah, and I, I, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think what's interesting is not so much the the other side of it, but just talking about like dealing with an audience and dealing with strangers online. We. You know, in, in EMH, we had a interactive, we had various interaction, you know, interactive portions. But something that comes to mind when you say you're keeping them safe was when there's the the trials portion of the game. Right. And it's like this big bad monster is making the players, you know, do, do stuff. something, yeah. like lose mm. things and put themselves through stress. And in my mind, in real life, that would be like, all right, cut off your thumb. All right, you have to fight somebody or yeah, you yeah. sacrifice an animal, and it's like we know we don't want to be responsible for a thirteen-year-old, you know, attacking killing their his dog, brother you know. or, or yeah, killing his dog. Yeah. We didn't want to like so it was kind of like when we put those challenges out there. I remember there was a pocket of people that were like just so negative and against it like wow this is fucking lame i'm like i'm sorry we're running the game in the guise of a cult leader but we're not going to actually be a cult leader and make yeah. people you know, <laughs> harm themselves so it's like there there is that balance there but it's like you're never going to make people happy so keep yeah. them safe at least. exactly yeah exactly that's a really good point so just uh, some things that popped out from the chat to me is um silent smiler says something they learned about on fiction is try not to make a puzzle that is too e easy for you yourself to solve 
I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, cause... that's that's a fair way to look at it. Yeah. Because I, I think we in our we get in our own heads, and it's like, all right, let me make a puzzle. What's a puzzle to me? And it's exactly that. It's like think how mm. strangers are going to approach these types of things. Right. I th oh, it's it's noir. Alex Myler's noir. Oh, yeah. hey, okay. yeah, hey, welcome. Hey. Um, and there was something else, another good message I saw. I might have lost it. It's okay. Yeah, uh, no, but the, there's a good chat, and people are talking about us doing this type of stream more frequently. I mean, okay, I'd love to do this again, but I, I think just we were just planning this as like a one off thing. But um, as we got closer to Halloween, maybe there'll be more opportunities to. You know, keep horror chats like this going. But I, I think I was, I've been having a blast personally. Same. Even though yeah, Roddy, great. running for his life. <laughs> yes, I am. And it's okay. I'm having a great time. <laughs> and, uh, Anderson's um, a good dude. He's in the chat. I think. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm trying to think about like the 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 balance of everything that we do and you, you said it yourself like there's no real way to make everybody happy you know as long mm -hmm. as it is as long as people are dealing with um as long as we give the audience um the freedom to interact we have to uh take care of them you know yeah um if if we were if, if we're dealing with characters, then we can go buck wild and you know like cut <laughs> somebody's you know yeah. make them cut their own arms off. But you know it's it's there's this I don't know there's th just it's so like it's, a, it's like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. You know you want yeah. to put the players through difficult things, but you still want them to. To, have fun. <laughs> to finish to finish the yeah. story you know you can't yeah. party wipe on the first encounter because otherwise it's boring you know everybody oh everybody dies great cool i guess yeah <laughs> you know the, 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 there's not a lot of fun with that and um yeah i think i heard i heard something recently i'm gonna butcher the quote That's but okay. it was something like um horror is not about like violence or gore or fear itself it's about intense empathy and i, I think that's something that shit yes maybe not like our specific projects but I, I you know i say that out loud but i think between the three of us here i think that's definitely you know true to to what we've at least i mean made popular I would agree. Recently. yeah like, that is absolutely major true projects here i think empathy is a huge component of it I mean, it's, especially yeah. especially with Mary, I'd say. Yeah, no, I was gonna say whether it's the like friend and brothers and and my project or Mary surviving. Yeah, that's an incredibly yeah. sensitive subject. It's like this person is alone, and right. you want them to succeed, and there are very visible things trying not to allow that to happen. Yeah, absolutely. For um, sure. Yeah. Damn. Um, I, I I will ask though, just just going back to um, going back to that idea of like this the the limitation of you only had you you really only had access to a house and the woods, um, that you know those kinds of limitations are normally what um normally what compose the genius of projects like these. Especially with with yours, Kay, like the, oh, the... like forced limitations. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to ask, um, what were the challenges that you faced uh, with such a limited space, and what did you look for? Uh, what did you look to for inspiration um, for your camera work and for for your for your effects and whatnot? Hmm. I think. Let me think on that one. Um, I think to approach my camera work, a lot of it was, oh, is this pretty? Is this neat? But also, uh, sometimes it was something as silly as my mom sitting in the next room and I don't want to see her. <laughs> <laughs> camera angles are your best friend. Literally. Uh, sometimes shots were muted because, like, my mom was talking on the phone. Um, and I was like, well, I gotta, I just want to get this video done. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so this video is going to be and, silent. And, but also I just had to too. hide my face or, like, what's an artistic way I can approach this to make it look nice but also 
make it seem like it was absent-mindedly set up, um, particularly in the first several videos, because it's the first several videos is just woman finds camera, screws around for a while, just sh like filming stuff for no reason. So right, it, it was it, there needed to be like a midpoint between set up deliberately or just set up absent-mindedly, like it was just kind of omnipresent. Right. And, yeah. Um, no, okay. well, that's great. I mean, it's... I don't, on simple, on paper, it's like a person is stuck in this house. So, from production, you're like, all right, let's get trapped in this house. <laughs> yeah, quite literally. Yeah. Sometimes it would literally be just like, like, what... How can I get a good shot that isn't too i like i didn't want to go too deeply into anybody's rooms like act mm -hmm. of like my parents or my sibling um so it was more like where are the fairly open spaces i can work that keep things a little bit impersonal like i don't want to have it like i want it to seem like a home but i don't want it to be too identifiable also, just from a safety thing, like, I think yeah. I glitched, the whole glitching out the the photos was partially, like, I don't really want you to see my siblings, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and ju just things like that. Um, and they all kind of worked into the themes. You know, I, I think that, I mean, that's silently kind of, kind of brilliant, because those sort of things that, like, limit you behind the camera... I think like uncannily and silently come across to the viewer. It's like they're gonna they know it's a story about a house, but they could probably identify one bedroom in that entire house. Mm. And I, I think that's one of those things that lingers with you. And even if you never say that out loud or define it, you know, it might have just been a production restraint constraint on you. But that's something that's if somebody's gonna bolt awake having watched that series and be like wait what is wrong with this house and it's like nothing's wrong with it but to the viewer you've only sh seen so much of it yeah i think that, that's yeah brilliant. like i, I think that. i shot of my bed one time period mm -hmm. like what, was never it the... again did i shoot in my bedroom right that was that was the, the shadow man creeping over yeah okay. <laughs> that was like the one time or maybe i think i i think you see my bed one other time uh in the second video where i'm sleeping with the pillow over my ear to drown out um Mirror Mary laughing. Right, but, but that's like that, a completely different angle. That. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's just such a different angle that the second, you know, it, they just look like different rooms. I, I didn't even know they were the same room until you said it right now. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. No, I was <laughs> no, like, no, oh yeah, that is true. That is the same that place. Smacks you in the face. It is. Um, yeah, I tried to stay away from making things too familiar. Right. You don't want to get them too comfortable either. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Also, because it's like the amount of times my parents would say to me, uh, so are, are people going to, like, know our house now? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I hope not. <laughs> I'm trying not, not if, Mom. Not if I do my job right, Mother. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny, and I, I think going to a project like that, it has to be slightly more you know not slightly more it has to be stressful doing that completely on your own but i think when you do work with more people you open yourself up to more accidents you know more information slipping out yes I, a funny story that I, I think when we did q a's for our project we might have brought this up but like we tried to you know, go, taking a few steps back, we tried to maintain complete immersion early on. You know, we never gave our last names out and we weren't broadcasting that we were you know, making this except to our personal lockdown Facebooks. And my brother, who it's funny because now like he, I mean, he does, but he doesn't really use like Facebook or social media anymore. Like he, he hates it now. But when he was a uh, you know, middle schooler helping us out with the project or, you mm. know, just early in high school, he was like at some like rec soccer game in the stands and some girl was like, Hey, I know you. And he's like, what? He goes, yeah, yeah, the YouTube what? stuff. And it's just like, what are the odds of that? Yeah. And then oh later my gosh, on, that's scary. On, yeah. Later on, on Facebook, he gets a message from somebody and he's just, you know, being friendly. He's like, yeah, you know, what's up? Yeah. Nothing much. How are your brother? You know, you know, what is your brother and the guys doing? And then he just stopped. He goes, how do you know me? 
and he's like, oh shit, oh shit, this is somebody from, from the game, this is somebody from the audience, and he, he tried to back out, but at that point, once it was confirmed that he was related to, you know, he was my brother, that's when the floodgate broke, and it's like, oh man, you know, doing that completely on your own, you can probably isolate yourself more, but if you get help oh, and you sure. work with more people, you know, more people can give secrets away. Yeah. <laughs> Accidentally. I, yeah, I, I personally didn't really have to deal with that, because every every person that was involved with m52 was in the industry so you mm -hmm. know it, it, it and we we started doing it when we were all in college in la so it was like yeah that was everybody had a had a series <laughs> they were working on exactly so it, it, it was so much more like it, it, it was less like oh my god they found out and more like Man, when are hey, they gonna find out? Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was literally what happened. We were just trying to get people to to know what the show was, and God, I can only imagine how terrifying that would be for for your brother to just be like, "Oh my God!" Like, I mean, people... at the time, he probably thought it was funny, but I, I think we were all mad at him, like as if it was his fault, and it wasn't. But right. it was like we kept this up for six months. Yeah, I mean, God knows, you know. It, it, ten years later, here we are talking about it. But yeah, you know, oh my you, god, it has doing, been ten years. When you're first doing these things, it's like you're simultaneously on top of the world and in the lowest pit you can imagine. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. When when I first started, I would just look at everybody else's work and see how much attention it got. And honestly, like it was not good for my mental health. Oh yeah, it, it's hard to work on anything and just have it met with a resounding nothing yes absolutely mm -hmm. um so i i, I want to get i want to get into um I, the, the stuff i cleared with you okay earlier um mm -hmm. just want to just want to kind of get into that more that deeper part of uh just the analysis that we're that, that we're trying to do um so one of the many interpretations of you know the characters of Mary um, is that each one of the characters, each one of the, the, the entities or monsters, however we want to describe them, are uh, anthropomorphizations of either the results of mental illness or uh, the symptoms or just interpretations of mental illness itself. Um, how did your personal experience, um, influence not only their design, but also the physicality that you put into these characters, the voices you put into these characters, and a a apart from that as well, the way you filmed them, the way you went about putting them into the story? How did, how did all of that come together? Hmm. Yeah, so... I think in each case, they were definitely just aspects of things that I have experienced. And in, I, th I think I'm just going to go monster by monster with this. Um, I think they had just been simultaneously a, a combination of things that visually I thought were really cool, but also things that made sense thematically to what I wanted. Like, for example, um, Mary Mary, Maria, Beauty, whatever you want to call her, because I never really gave them official names. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I did wow, that on I love purpose. That. I, to I see didn't what realize people would that. Do. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and like in in her case, there there's a lot of aspects of self image, um, perception of your body, perception of yourself as an adult. Um, as a sexual being as and there's a lot of that aspect in there so she is a she like has that element of the broken porce strange porcelain doll but in mm. reality if you look up if you look up close at her mask it's not porcelain it's and i mean you you could call this me kind of sliding this into the canon after the fact but i mean it's it's crayon on a plastic mask done almost purposefully sloppily, but it's supposed to look a lot prettier from a distance. But then when you get up close, it's this sloppily drawn imitation of beauty 
Hmm. When and then she takes off her mask and her teeth are rotting and her skin is all gray and mm -hmm. it's just this sort of facade of all of this stuff we project. Um, and I mean, like I I deliberately tried to make her very strange by making her the the color of the mask very uh, skin toned, flesh toned. Mm -hmm. And instead of painting, because I didn't really want to try to find a paint that matched my skin tone, I figured instead I would use... I actually took pictures of myself, brought them into Photoshop, grabbed the hex codes of a couple of different skin tones, printed out paper in that color, and then chopped them into triangles and Mod Podge them onto the mask. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. That's really <laughs> incredible. And that's why the the color looks a little bit better blended in. Um, but then I wanted it to look like I, I didn't want it to look as perfect as you think it looks initially. Um, because like up close and do not touch when you kind of get a, a better look at her, it's all cracked and and grotesque. Yeah, but, right. it's not it's, nearly but as then clean and, as and then the way Mary sees it is very, very different. Uh, like Mary sees her as this ideal, this beautiful thing that she constantly compares to herself. There's that act, deliberate act of comparing in. God, is it video six? God, is that daily life update? What did I title my videos? <laughs> um, <laughs> mood. Isn't it funny over That's time the mood. wikis become more of a source of resource for us than for the viewers? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. People... God, because some videos, like, I deliberately would pick the title, and then some of them would be, like, literally seconds before upload. I'm like, what am I calling this? Oh, <laughs> last eight months. There you go. <laughs> I mean, the objectivity or, you know, poetry of the titles. It's like, are you being straightforward, or are you going to be a writer with it? Yeah, and then you try to do both, and you end up with something that doesn't make sense <laughs> for anyone but you. Like an entire sentence for a title. God, yeah. Um, let me think. So that's kind of that's kind of what filtered into the aspect of Mirror Mary. Um The Shadow is a lot more of like a the, the Shadow Man, the Shadow Monster, um is a lot more of like that slower creeping dread, that that sort of sadness that that's is slow moving, constantly trotting along. Um, that never really stops moving. It just keeps, it's just, a, you're just a little bit faster than it. Um, <laughs> it's a very I'm highly fear. speaking in metaphor here. Yeah. Um, and so as such, it's completely textureless. It's, I mean, it's, a, I'm, I'm going to go into this when I do my breakdowns of how I made some of my effects on my channel. On the behind the scenes channel yeah, yeah, but it's, it's entirely a <laughs> yes oh yeah no um it's it's very much just a it's completely featureless it's it's a black mask it's a, like the mask in the after effects term like it is in, entirely one color mm. it is there is no definition it's flat um and it, it the way i kind of designed it it's not something that actively moves quickly it um moves very very slowly just kind of plodding along and the way i designed its motion that mary moves around the house and it will eventually catch up to her if she stops moving but if she just kind of meanders around uh she can avoid it if she keeps going but as soon as she stops as soon as she takes a break to nap uh it catches up and wakes her back up right uh, god that... I, I think i yeah I, I remember I like designed it almost it reminded me of just different mechanics of enemies in video games because I think I, pl I was just playing a lot of video games interestingly enough frictional games Soma uh, yeah oh my god yeah amnesia um, informed a lot of that because I was playing Soma and watching how the different monsters moved and there's different you have to evade each one different ways and that was something that kind of went into how um i kind of created the monster movements as both from a thematic way and from a way of there are these sequences where mary has to sneak around the house from different monsters and that's gonna 
the those sequences are going to be different depending on who she's dealing with that night. Right. Um, different strategies for different and, monsters. <laughs> yeah, and and so I think I even straight up borrowed the partially from like the Slenderman mythos and partially from games like Soma, the looking directly at monsters causes a distortion aspect. Um, right. They mess with the camera. And but yeah. Um but in I kinda played with that a little bit with Mary and that it's more her response that causes the camera to freak out than the actual monsters themselves. Um I think that's something I tried to make clear towards the in the in anagnoresis. I don't know if it got through. Um <laughs> it did. It did. To me at least. Oh nice. Awesome. <laughs> Um, but then, let's see, moving to, um, moving to the Veiled Lady, that's, I always called her Boss Monster, that's just what I called her. <laughs> um, Big Bad. Yeah, because she was easily the boss of the, tr the, that trio of the three of them, um, the Regina George of shitty mental health. Oh god, it's the plastics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> literally um <laughs> that like crappy inner voice um that constantly is telling you that everything you believe is fake and uh nobody wants to spend time with you like i literally had a sequence where she's doing that to mary while she's on the computer on twitter talking to people and veil's just sitting there like they don't want to talk to you um they they're not interested um things like that and that she's also the most malicious of the three in that she deliberately hurts mary towards the end like physically um and nope. so i i i designed her physicality uh to be in the beginning of the series she's a lot more unwieldy um and I tried to move her as if, like, I was never fully balanced, so she was always shifting her weight. Um, but then towards the end of the series, as she grows stronger and her influence grows over Mary, um, she stands straighter and she tends to tower over Mary more often. It also helped that several times in an agnoresis, my sister played um, the Veiled Lady, who, and my sister happens to be taller than me, so... There you go. That helped out a lot. Um, so there was aspects of how each of the the monsters changed throughout the story. Um, let's see. And then the Crawling Darkness is the one that gets the most complicated because it has a very personal meaning to me, but also just, like, there's a surface level, and then there's one, like, a deeper one that I probably just won't go into, but mm -hmm. a largely it's extremely chaotic extremely uh bizarre constantly changing shape it doesn't really have a fine a form that works fully until an agnoresis like it keeps changing its appearance it keeps um like like each time you really see it in its core uh like in do not touch versus an agnoresis it looks different um and I think I kind of finalized its design in an anuresis as this shifting, changing thing. But one of the united kind of aspects of it is that uh, every single time Mary makes contact with it, she gets significantly more upset and either pushes back or goes into more of a panic uh, and gets overwhelmed. Um, and so that I, I tried to make it almost it's hard to describe something that does not feel humanoid in comparison to any of the other cuz the other the other monsters had humanoid aspects but the crawling darkness was more formless the and shapeless darkness. <laughs> literally um, and it was very morally gray like you really like uh. i wanted it to seem a little bit of a wild card a little bit of a what what is this thing what aspect like like where is this what is this thing what does it mean right um and i mean it, it's one of the things that helps mary to her final success despite also causing her significant problems at the in the rest of the series 
Um, so it's it's supposed to be very strange and kind of chaotic and bizarre. Right. When naming it, did um... or not naming it? Right. Yeah. You didn't officially name it, but the name reminds me of one of the names given to Near Lathotep. Um, one of the one of those Lovecraftian gods. Uh, he also mm. goes by the Crawling Chaos, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh. See, <laughs> yeah. originally I just called it the Crawly. I think I adopted the Crawling Darkness <laughs> when, um, when people started being like, "What do you? What do? You, how do I refer to this thing?" Right. Um, but I just called it the Crawly for the longest time, just because it it fair. sort of moved along, <laughs> kind of doing its own thing. Um, I like got distracted by legs in the fountain. Yeah, me too. I'm like, what the he what? Who are you? What is this? I think this is further than I've ever gotten. <laughs> I don't remember any of this. Uh, but go on, go on, Kay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. So I think a lot of um, I th I think that kind of wraps it wraps it up because I got through all four. I mean, technically, if we want to just mention the woman in white, she is very much like a grounding mechanism uh hmm. a voice of reason i think originally i was gonna just call her reason but right. i thought that was a little too on the nose um <laughs> i mean I, she... no, nothing wrong with on the nose to be honest i, I like the. that's yeah. true help me out i think i think guy. she was supposed to be welcoming but also weird because mary doesn't trust her and so i don't really want the audience to implicitly trust her if mary doesn't right so she's still equally as weird but she's there's always this kind of soft sort of blur whenever we whenever she kind of does her thing um things are much calmer a little bit more ambient but in like a pleasant ambient kind of way rather than like a horror ambient um she's supposed to be a very different balance right there's, there's no trust there but it's a comfortable image it's very i mean she's not being chased yeah she's yeah, not being exactly. chased so yeah it it's funny it, it it's it's like yeah mary doesn't doesn't get chased by uh the lady in white she chases the lady in white instead yeah Oh, how the turntables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's excellent. And he gave us a very in-depth look at, you know, the, your creatures in the world that, you know, spawn them. Yeah. Your characters are... That's why it's always funny. Like, what do you, you call them? The bad guys, the monsters, the mm -hmm. antagonists? George. <laughs> the Georges <laughs> of your world. <laughs> um. So before we go, we're getting close to the end of our uh of our allotted time one of the viewers will be sacrificed to the pumpkin king yes because we have determined that because otherwise uh the pumpkin king comes back to full life and kills everybody very much like cabin in the woods there's uh, no pumpkin emoji on twitch emotes that's disappointing uh, oh, no. <laughs> I, I will i will ask kate do you have any projects uh that you want to publicize right now? Do you have anything specific apart from that, uh, from your behind the scenes stuff, which we will put the link in the chat so that everybody can access it. Hmm. So okay. I'm, I've been very deliberately cryptic on the fact that I'm working on another project, but it's still so, so early in um, pre-production right now for me to really talk too much about it. I know I created a little bit of a, not really an ARG, but just a little puzzle um, to find a mood board that exists out there. Um, if you watch the Q&A, you'll find all those clues. And I'm, if you scroll through my Twitter, you'll find the link because somebody solved it. Um, <laughs> okay, that's but, good. Um, let me think. Uh, but yeah, I refer to it. Whenever I talk about it, I use uh, hashtag. Hold on, I'm going to have to like go through the title to make sure I list this out right. Hashtag Saint, Saint S... Lonnie Dolce. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> s-t-l-d-o-c-e uh and that's that is a abbreviation of what will hopefully if i keep it become the title um so anytime i use that hashtag i'm 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 hinting at stuff for that um but i'm gonna be doing behind the scenes stuff maybe i'll do a one shot or two from time to time depends on my whims i suppose um I'll put that but i'll mostly be well. 
I'll mostly be working uh, on that kind of quietly and then every once in a while putting out behind the scenes stuff. I'll be actively shitposting on Twitter <laughs> um, and making obscure software jokes maybe three people get. Um. But the more followers <laughs> you lose per joke, the more you're winning. Exactly. <laughs> that is the measure of success. It's the, the DJ Khaled album, Suffering from Success. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the more people that find you incomprehensible, the better you're doing in life, is how I look at it. Yeah. Uh, Kay, why don't you choose one of our viewers to sacrifice? <laughs> you do not have oh to, my choose gosh. to sacrifice one of the viewers. <laughs> you have you to choose one. I was not briefed. No, no, it has, to, it has to be what she has to choose. I'm sorry. Let's do it. Yeah, let, yeah, oh let's do it. Wait, do I actually have to choose somebody? Choose yeah, a viewer to sacrifice to the, the Pumpkin the King. Of this week. Oh, she, she's the can sacrificer. I, I just the chat? <laughs> Yeah, just just look at chat, choose somebody to sacrifice, and then I'll summon them into my room and I'll kill them. Go for it. We'll, we'll, we'll tweet about it after. Oh, God. That's what oh, we'll do. Dear. No, legit, we're gonna pick a horror movie classic death, and one viewer a, a, a stream will will be fall that fate, <laughs> and that'll be our follow up oh, no. tweet for the stream. And you might you might hear them die. I'm not sure yet. So it's, oh God, oh, I'm gonna die this time. Oh shit. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah, you're actually again <laughs> running for your life. Uh, does this work? Is he still gonna be able to kill me if I'm up here? <laughs> this is like the, ooh, with the classic monster, right? The oh, guy no. who runs oh, around no. like the tackle. Oh, oh no! Can he get me? Yeah, there he is. I don't think he can get me. He's gonna give you a kiss. <laughs> oh Jesus! He's staring Christ. right at him. <laughs> I can't look at him. He's ah fuck Jesus! I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the scream. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to lose. Uh, uh. Are we sacrificing you? No! I got other shows to do. <laughs> All right, Kay, uh, choose a viewer, and then we'll uh, we'll let everybody we'll know who the, who the next uh, guest for next uh, next show is going to be. Hmm. All right, let me think. <laughs> I mean, with Just all these pumpkin emojis... <laughs> I think with all these pumpkin emojis, I I gotta say, Glitch Bear Does Horror is impressing me here. Oh. Glitch Bear Does Horror is the first sacrifice for the greater good in pumpkin emoji. I'm killing them! We will deal with them after we wrap this stream up. Kay, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. And you know we're all. Thank you I mean, so much for having me. Are always very easy to to reach one another, but thank you for sitting down and doing this. This was this was a blast. Yeah, this was amazing, Kay. Yeah, thank this you so much. Great. And this was great. It was really fun. Can't, can't wait to have you over again. Hey. For sacrifices in the future. Yes, more people to, to kill. <laughs> and uh, okay. I'll bring my cloak next time. Yes, do it. Um, okay, uh, everybody, thank you so, so much for hanging out. Thank you so, so much for interacting on chat. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, tune out. Uh, tune out. Wow, tune great. Out. Tune in <laughs> next Tuesday, uh, the 13th. Don't, don't, give, don't give it out yet. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, leave them hanging over the weekend. Mm, but I you, would... gotta, you got hype is what drives the world. It is the spice melange of internet culture. Come on, kid. You gotta tickle their balls a little bit. Come on. Jeez. What? <laughs> you think we'll, down. Uh, we'll, we'll announce the our next guest very soon, whether it's tonight or over the weekend. I, I think Rod needs a Fine. glass of water, and we will get that for him. Thank you all for, for viewing, for viewing, for watching. All right. this Thank I you know. all. Kay, you have been incredible. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody. This has been Pumpkin Emoji. We will see you next time. You've been saving the game. I like that. See ya.